Line Megacity, futuristic city in Saudi Arabia. Hey everyone, welcome to our channel. If you're new here, welcome. And consider subscribing to my channel and click that little bell notification below. The world is evolving and most people are trying to move to urban areas. And this leads to increased population density in urban areas. When there are more people, the need for infrastructure grows and the areas develop in facilities, technology, and many other aspects. So, such a developed city that can bear up to 10 million or more people is known as a megacity. There are currently over 40 megacities in the world, including Tokyo, New York, Paris, Berlin, and Bangkok. Now, Saudi Arabia is going to join them with their futuristic city, the Line Megacity. But the Line is not going to be a typical megacity as we defined earlier. And today, let's see why. The Line is a modern linear city with a population of 9 million people running along the Hejaz Railway from the Red Sea to the city of Tabuk. And it made headlines for its stylish and somewhat unnecessary approach to city building, with a mirrored shell containing a completely self-contained 500 meters tall, 200 meters wide, and 170 kilometers long city. The Line is being presented to us by Niam a business that the Saudi Arabian government established as a form of architecture, engineering, and sustainability amalgamation to advance the country. Aside from the line's ultra-thin and massively long footprint, Neon promises that the city will have multiple neighborhoods that can be walked in 5 minutes, end-to-end -end travel in 20 minutes, and a consistent microclimate. The project is seen as a paradigm shift in typical urban life and urbanization. The first plan of the line was published in January 2021 by Prince Mohammed bin Salman, chairman of the Neon Board of Directors. The first excavations began in October 2021. Drone footage published by Odd Sky in October 2022 indicated that building on the line was underway, with major excavation activity taking place over the entire length of the project. It's roughly estimated that the project will cost $500 billion. You'll be able to fly into the new international airport, hop on a high-speed rail, and travel to any region of Neon by mid-2026. Before that, Trajina and other Neon districts will experience an increase in tourism and the arrival of new residents. The goal is for 1 million people to live on the line by 2030, and approximately 9 million by 2045. The line, according to its designers, will be encased in a mirror facade on the exterior, giving it a distinct personality. Buildings, layers of public parks, pedestrian spaces, schools, residences, and workplaces will be built on the interior. Traditional urban planning models predict that urbanization will develop horizontally rather than vertically. There will be two mirrored structures that will run parallel to each other, creating a large outdoor space. They follow a concept called zero-gravity urbanization. This structure, which rises 500 meters above sea level, means that walls will be built taller than several skyscrapers. In the line, urban life is organized in three dimensions, and the complex will have two underground layers for infrastructure and transportation, and a surface area where residents will live in between the buildings. The two zero-gravity urbanism adaptations are hyper-proximity and hyper-mixed use. Multimodal mobility is given priority over car-centric architecture in the hyper-proximity city model. Zero-gravity urbanism frees us from the constraints of the ground plane and the need to destroy it. The zero-gravity urbanism paradigm allows us to locate services nearby. This opens up a whole new world of previously challenging or impossible adjacencies. This city, which looks like a building from a sci-fi movie, is more than just a futuristic city. It provides world-class life quality where the smartest and best live. A place of exceptional social and economic experimentation free of pollution and traffic accidents, combined with world-class preventative health care, allowing people to enjoy longer lives. It's a place to prototype businesses centered on people rather than technology, a cognitive metropolis that anticipates and responds to our needs rather than the other way around. Living in zero gravity will result in a higher density footprint, resulting in a richer human experience and new business prospects. It's the most effective environmental solution to urbanism, the zero-car environment is part of a completely sustainable transportation system with no pollution and no waiting time. Reduced traveling times means more time for recreation. Citizens will also have extra cash if they don't have to pay for expenses such as automobile insurance, fuel, and parking. It's a community inventing the future. 
The effective delivery of the line will be made possible by cutting edge technology planning, logistics, and modular construction. The community will also coexist peacefully with and be close to nature, which would be 95% unaffected by urbanization. The Vertical Garden City will keep you only two minutes away from nature. By completing this project, Saudi Arabia will add almost $50 billion to its GDP and 380,000 new jobs. But the expected outcome is not providing people with all those facilities and jobs. It's all about zero pollution, using renewable energy, and making an example for the future. It's a great example of high-tech towns being built throughout the world to address challenges such as the housing crisis and climate change. As I said, they will use renewable energy sources to power the line. There will be no roads, cars, or pollutants, and 95% of the area will be left for nature. People's health and welfare will take precedence over transportation and infrastructure, unlike in traditional cities. Because of the blade effects of the tall structures, the arc of the sun will ensure that the outdoor spaces will not receive sunlight for all 10 hours of the day. This helps to prevent heat buildup. In terms of wind, the blades will buffer the outside layer, keeping the canyon completely free of wind and dust hazards. Meanwhile, the canyon's top will be exposed so that it can breathe. Niyam says that efforts to safeguard local species are also important in the design of the line. Unlike traditional cities, the line will ensure that nature is not muted as it crosses the urban fabric, but rather that it's witnessed, appreciated, and celebrated. The reflective facade of the line is one design component that caused concern for wildlife. That's because reflective surfaces are thought to be one of the leading causes of bird mortality each year. But they promise that with the help of a dedicated team of scientists who will map these exact migration routes and patterns, they will use facade treatments that match with migratory bird pathways and prevent collisions. The other main aim of the line was to reduce carbon emissions to zero. They say that Neom has the opportunity to build a greenfield city that will not have such problems to start with. For the carbon emissions that cannot be avoided, the development will also employ carbon removal technologies. According to the director, whatever carbon emissions are emitted during the fabrication and delivery of the structural elements would be completely balanced out. The line construction will also include carbon offsetting and carbon sequestration, such as CO2 capture. They're also studying sustainable building materials and technologies. They continue to investigate what they can do to create a city with 9 million residents carbon-free. The line residents will live in interconnected civilizations managed by artificial intelligence that's built to coexist with nature. The future development will promote walkability, sustainable energy, and technology to create a new way of life. Mohammed bin Salman, the chairman of the Neon Board of Directors, says the designs revealed today for the city's vertically layered communities will challenge the traditional flat, horizontal cities and create a model for nature preservation and enhanced human livability. The line will tackle humanity's challenges in urban life today and will shine a light on alternative ways to live. So, if you ask me why Saudi Arabia needs this megacity, it's all about accommodating their expected population growth. But with the line, they're trying to make a change by reducing pollution, traffic, inefficiency, urban sprawl, and inequality.